Welcome to something crunchy. Tyler is homies with Blake. Blake is the older bro of Blair. Blair is married to Tyler and is a slutty slut slut. Welcome to something crunchy. What the hell is crunchy? Welcome to something crunchy. Welcome to another episode of Feelin' Vine. I'm hey, Cullen uh, Blake. With me as always, Blair and Tyler Dressel. Hi. And we feeling tonight. Very excited about tonight's extra classy affair. As you should be. I hope you got the grapes for this one. It's the wine soap. Yay! <laughs> All that really means is that we've switched from beer to wine tonight, and Blair can replace her three sips of White Claw with some three glasses of vino. <laughs> that should be fun. Get ready for some Texas in about 20 minutes. Oh, it's going to get heavy in here. <laughs> well, let's pour a glass. We'll tell you all about what we're drinking and get into that later. But before we get after it, story time. We have an epic tale for you. In follow-up to our wildly successful sode on Hollywood Hammers a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Y'all liked that one. Well, we now have a first-hand account on one of the hammers discussed on oh our my list. Oh, gosh. An eyewitness. <laughs> Let's go back a couple weeks to the birthday of one local legend and close friend of the show, Jeff Jump. Hey! hey. Yeah. Guys Night in Chandler. Panda Watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's wife-free and kid-free, so us men can really focus on our drinking. And we were successful. Flying high. Vibes are great. Jeff is all fucked up on dank beers. It's everything we wanted this night to be, and it's not even 9 o'clock. <laughs> so we take it down a notch, hit up a cigar bar, so Hefe has a classier place to barf up a lung. <laughs> this is the setting for our story, and it's about to get good. There's five or six of us, and only one of the guys we had met that night because he had just moved to town from Cali. He grew up with Jeff. He was a lot of fun. We were getting to know him. Someone tells him we have a podcast. He asks us what it's about. <laughs> We fucking love that question. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler and I look at each other like, I don't know. Where do we do begin? We, do we tell him? <laughs> Is he cool? <laughs> There's always two ways to answer this question. And most of the time it's, yeah, we're a comedy entertainment podcast. And then there's sometimes the more honest answers for those we know better. Yeah. <laughs> I said, well, we just had our last sode on the healthiest hogs of Hollywood. <laughs> Talked about celebrity peeing for an hour. Naturally, of course, the very normal reaction to this is, well, all right, who's hogging? What's up? <laughs> I like how there's interest. Oh, for sure. Point. One of the guys was like, yeah, Chris Evans, isn't he known for a beefy rod? <laughs> we're Everybody's like, heard of someone. Yeah, we're like, I don't know. Got to check with the research home. team. Yeah. They put all the D in this R&D for us. We did share what we learned, and this was like the night right after we recorded it, so still fresh. We mentioned Willem Dafoe, James Woods, obviously Idris Elbow. Obviously. And, and then I make the comment, apparently Michael Fassbender is the undisputed kingpin of Hollywood. We're on this now. And here comes the magic. This is the one in a million odds. Uh, we're interrupted by this Samoan mountain of a man. I mean, he looked like The Rock if The Rock had 15 additional muscles in his head and never smiled. Stop. This guy was a fucking tank. <laughs> and he apparently overheard a table of dudes shouting over celebrity ween. <laughs> it's just he and his drunk girlfriend. And he says, hey, who heard Michael Fassbender has a huge dick? No. We turn around and we're like, well, good for Happy Gil. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, I know him personally. I used to be his driver and I've seen it. It's not that big. It's definitely what? a rumor. Can you believe this? Hold on. There's so much to unpack. I know. Right yeah. there. First off, like, so he and his girlfriend are playfully giving us shit for being five straight guys having a conversation about Hollywood sausages. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. But he's sitting there listening to it and all only chimes in to correct us that we were wrong about one and that he's seen it so he could confirm. <laughs> I gave him some shit right back for that. Yeah. yeah. And, and then I got back to being excited and couldn't believe that this happened. So after being fact checked, we can provide first hand knowledge from someone who's seen the mythical hog of Hollywood and its reputation is apparently way bigger than anything else. Wow. What are the chances, Blair? <laughs> We're having this conversation Only the enough. night after we record the episode I at a table right next to Fastbender's driver, who's close enough with the guy he could describe his genitals in detail. What a world! What a your world. driver gets to see like all your Hollywood hammers in there. Like, hey, maybe he likes to jerk it in the back seat. I don't know. From what I understand, like a driver is not supposed to talk about those things. Right, like, a driver's supposed to be cool and quiet. And <laughs> not like there's a certain level of confidentiality there. Yeah. A group of guys talking about your guy's cock back there. Like, 
don't mention maybe <laughs> he couldn't wait to chime in it was so weird yeah his girl, I just his wish I could have weird. been a fly on the wall at this bar. Wonder who else was sitting around here and like can't wait to see Idris. <laughs> he was for real too. Like he had some cool stories and fun facts. I almost opened up our interview with Kathy last week with the story, but I decided against it last minute. <laughs> I wasn't sure that she would be as excited as we were about Fast Bender's Fast, average yeah. dong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she might have gotten a laugh out of that. She was pretty fun. Well, let's get into some grapes. I'll be your yeah. sommelier this evening. Um, we're not going to bore you with everything you didn't know or care about in wine. We'll, we'll work this into a fun sode with some crunchy tones and a zesty finish. Yes, <laughs> love those. We do have a few bottles here in front of us. Mm-hmm. We have not been provided any of these by sponsors and haven't been paid to endorse these brands. I drink two of these three personally and find these particular bottles have some of the most bang for the buck. In fact, not one bottle we will be drinking costs more than $20. I have several I recommend depending on your taste and preferences up to the $100 range, but I have found like most of you, expensive does not always translate to good tasting and or enjoyable. True. So I've chosen two reds and a white. We'll be getting into a Pinot made by the same makers of the very popular and now mainstream Mayomi called Vinstone, their new one. We'll try my favorite cab at the moment made by Eater. And right now, we started off with the white. Uh, we're more red drinkers and really should have gone with like a Grige or a Riesling, but I was feeling like a buttery shard for this. <laughs> like the only thing I could think of in this price category was KJ. And I don't even know if they make that shit anymore. So <laughs> this is where we're trying something new. Uh, I went to the wine store, found a lady and was like, yeah, I need like a super buttery shard for like the most crunchy podcast tonight and could use a little help <laughs> i can she, imagine her face <laughs> she was like oh you want buttery i'll show you the butter bam here's butter knife the only thing i got more buttery than that is buttercream and i even have one down here just called butter <laughs> found the right yeah, yeah. For she this. was like she knows her butter she was like so this one is your butter max and this one is your butterful and i was like damn lady i don't know it's Tell me which one pairs best with some witty comedy and inappropriate jokes. <laughs> so here we are with the buttercream. I just hate it. Um, yeah, I had to really choke it down. It's not bad. No. It's not good. It's like they didn't focus on like a buttery wine. They focused on like a stick of butter that had alcohol in it. Right. It does taste like a stick. Like you uh-huh. just took a big chunk out of a stick. And Alcoholic like country crock. Took a sip of wine after that and mixed it in your mouth. Yeah. It, um, it's not our usual, so I know it's like just a bit different. I'm ri- already drunk. I've had three sips. Rich, <laughs> creamy texture with tropical fruit, vanilla notes, and a kiss of sweetness. I think it's is? a stick of butter with a kiss of butter. <laughs> <laughs> Slip, right? <laughs> um, it's a bittery butter. A bittery butter. My best opinion. Yeah. Uh, I did confirm the specific order to this, and I was correct on how I thought it should go. I was very proud of myself. But we should be cleansing our palates, doing it right. Just no one wants to hear any of that shit. Obviously, I want you hammered on wine, and the most effective way of doing that would be drinking game, I think. <laughs> yeah. A drinking game with this wine? Yes. Welcome to the wine chug. Yeah. No. <laughs> Good to be oh my here. God. Yeah. Let's get our learn on. Do up some wine trivia where it's double sips for every wrong answer. Oh. And I'll maybe take a sip if you get it right. Oh, my God. Are you ready to get all wine, no, no, writer? I'm going to be blacked <laughs> out by the end of this. All right. So let's move on from this buttery mess. Ugh. I'm ready to get on to the Vinstone. Oh, Blair's. Blair's face. Yeah. Says, Blair's it face. <laughs> says it all. Blair's Blair's face right face now says like, it all. Blair's enjoying the, what is it? Butter? butter it's nuts? that like I'm scared, but I'm having a good time. Can a I white mix to a red. the two if I want to like go back to butter? Where? What are you, you doing? You don't go back to butter. No, you don't mix. You want to keep moving forward, essentially, but who gives a shit? I like, kind of like to play across the board. We don't need to stand on the ceremony here. <laughs> you sip on whatever you like there, Blair. <laughs> Got like nine glasses of wine in front of you. Yeah. Us. like You, what you do take I... one and start sipping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just grab it. Grab Just it by the horns. Grab one All right. Drink. Fat sips when you get these wrong here. Yeah. So there is a widely accepted tasting process. You have the glasses filled approximately a third of the way, leaving room for the aromas and not filled to the brim like three suburban soccer moms the way we have it. <laughs> <laughs> so of this official tasting process, what is the first step when given a glass? Smell it. It's a good guess. 
I like that. You're wrong. Shake it. Move it. <laughs> shake it. Shake it. it. Throw it against the wall and <laughs> shake it. Flap it. Lick it. <laughs> Nick it. I'm going to say tilt it at a 45 degree angle and then back to original stance. I mean, We'll give you like a half a Blair okay. to start drinking. Yeah. You, Tyler, okay. you, you, could, you could take a sip if you like. All right. If, if, you're, how we're if you're enjoying yourself, you take a sip. Blair, why aren't you chugging? Oh, my God. How are you talking if you're chugging wine? <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> None of my answers were correct? None of your answers were correct. You start by looking at the color, which so we'll give Tyler the, yeah, you tilt the glass, get a good look at the color, and then you smell before you taste. So the first step. Is looking at the color. I looked at the color in turning my mouth. <laughs> See, I always thought you, <laughs> <clears throat> you tilt it to the side, oh and then when you bring it back down, you can watch the wine run. That's how you tell it's alcohol content. It's legs. I yeah. thought it was the sugar content. No, no. it's the alcohol. alcohol content. Way to go, Blair. Yes. That's how you know if it was like strong or not, where you're like, oh, yeah, it's a good one. Some will blay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there are four tasting elements to look for when sampling wine. Name two. Body, texture. Okay, I like where you're going. Aroma. No. Therapy. The first one is acidity. Oh, yeah. Oh. Tannins. Correct. <laughs> what? Correct. Is happening now. Sugars. Sweetness is another one. I'll allow it. That's two. Blair be drinking. Oh, Why are you? Boom. This is not I'm, good. I'll drink with you. Vin Stone. My arms so. are yeah, Vin Stone. <laughs> Pairs with a nice comedy podcast. It does. Like the cotton candy of wine. Like as soon as it hits your mouth, it just like evaporates. Ooh. I think call. it's just because you've had too much butter. <laughs> the butter is that nice and thick <laughs> you, you going gotta, down. My... You got a buttery palate to start. So <laughs> <laughs> hard to tell. Because <laughs> you're only wearing one shoe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> moving the wine around in your mouth when tasting allows all of your taste receptors to fire where is sweetness bitterness and sourness detected on the tongue in the back well there's an answer on for each one Blair. in the back <laughs> <laughs> in the throat on my face no i didn't mean, there's like the tip and then there's the size and then there's the middle and there's the back you can start drinking tyler do you have an answer for us <laughs> in the back <laughs> let's say the left side get out <laughs> <laughs> we were taught this early on y'all have forgotten this sweetness is detected at the tip of the tongue Bitterness at the back. The back! And sourness on the sides. You were supposed to tell me for each one. Yeah. <laughs> the just... back! You can feel it in the back! <laughs> I like it in the back! <laughs> <laughs> you have to ask me individually if you need individual answers. I should have. <laughs> you can't get me drunk and then yeah. ask. Yeah, well, I'll drink to that. A three tiered question. We'll all drink to that. <laughs> that was a buttery question. <laughs> it was flawed from the start. It was. I don't know what you want. The wine soda is not going well. It's going to be sloppy as fuck oh, by the end of the God. <laughs> like 15 minutes in. Binge drinking <laughs> wine. Sloppy. Over here. It's a sloppy mess. <laughs> It's good. We need to get sloppy for our next segment. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One 750 milliliter bottle of wine contains approximately how many grapes? 150 to 250, 600 to 800, or 1,200 to 1,500? 600 to 800. Yeah, I was about to say the same. 600 to 800. Yay! Drink it up, B. Mm. Drink it up, B. Hey, I need a break. Drink I need a break. So drink it up, B. Hey. I'm so drunk. <laughs> you know when I'm already cheering. Like, Texas like, cheerleader. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, Texas in about 20 minutes. There it is. <laughs> Came out in the form the of cheer. Is cheerleader. Out, I mean. Cheerleader B in the house. <laughs> cheerleader B. <laughs> Uh, 2.8 pounds of grapes or 600 to 800 individual grapes are in one bottle of wine. I can taste it. <laughs> <laughs> True or false, women and Asians are more likely to feel the effects of wine. True. By the way, I feel right now. I'll go ahead. Look at Blair right now. <laughs> Look at I'll her. Say, my face is true, so yeah. I think I'll go with that. Shit. Keep chugging. 
<sighs> it is true. <laughs> oh, it is, it is true. true. It's true. I heard things. It's true. <laughs> I heard some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they have lower amounts of the enzymes needed to break down and clear alcohol from the body. Blair's drunk. <laughs> nice. True or false? Men are actually better tasters thanks to their superior sense of smell. I mean, true and a half. So superior. Such superior. <laughs> false. Be drinking. It's especially true for women, 25 to 35 years old. So Blair, you are in your prime sniffing years, but you don't have much longer. Ooh. Get your nose in the game. Take yeah. advantage of this time. True or false? Spain has a free 24-hour wine fountain in the Abruzzo region just outside of Barcelona. That sounds way too fun to be false. <laughs> Who is that? Somebody's <laughs> wine just Whoa, made an appearance. That was the butter. <laughs> the butter's like, I know. <laughs> That's the butter mixing with the oh, Tino. Totally going, true. What, what the fuck? It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's true, you bastard. <laughs> It's true. The wine is speaking from inside <laughs> us. Um, it's true. It's false. What? Aw. It's not Spain. Italy has a free 24 oh, hour wine fountain in the Abruzzo region just outside of Rome. Should have known. So, like bathtub wine? I don't good know, stuff. bro. I gave you, you all the info it? I got. You drank it, Blair. You can just like. You don't drink. bathe in it. You drink it. Yeah. You're supposed to wash your car with it? Like. Well, I don't know if it was like just for looksies, like looksie no touchy, <laughs> just or like for <laughs> I don't know. Did you drink, Blair? Yeah, did you drink? No, no I was didn't. supposed to drink. Uh, uh, be yeah. drinking. You got it wrong. <laughs> be drinking. I got it wrong. You got it wrong. I should say it. <laughs> <laughs> the act of toasting started in ancient Rome. They would literally drop a piece of toasted bread in the wine glass. Why did they do this? Hmm. Is this like a religious thing? No, good guess. Is this like a circle jerk thing? No, <laughs> bad guess. The last guy that... Also, great guess. <laughs> that was a bad guess. Limp biscuit, I mean. Limp biscuit. Limp that, biscuit? That... I, no, all right. That's, that's more of a modern thing. I don't know if Why do you put the biscuit in the wine? Why do you put the piece of toasted bread in the wine? It's uh, some sort of symbolism. Uh, no, it's not a symbolism. I'd say body of Christ, but that was way before. That's all I'll say. He <laughs> said no to he religious thing. He was there for that. Yeah, he was there. <laughs> he, was there for... he had his own body. Yeah, he was just JC over there. It's yeah. just straight taste. like it, Exactly just... right. Their wine, flavor? their wine was so bad, and because it tasted like shit, they added toast to soften the unsavory flavors. After 18 guesses, Blair gets to take a half a sip. Hey! I'll take it. Ooh, I took too big of a sip. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you just need a sip of stone. You don't need to like, uh, get stoned over there. God bless. What'd you do? Tyler's chugging too over there. Much. I'm so used to just throwing the beers back. Yeah. This is hard. Our faces. Today. This is hard. It's <laughs> the wine sewed. So <laughs> glad we're not on video right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, not pretty, you guys. It's not pretty. <laughs> Should we go live? I don't think so. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's best best. Nobody wants to see this right no now. No one wants to see this. <laughs> Who is most responsible for the California wine boom? Thomas Jefferson, JFK, or Benjamin Franklin? Who gives a shit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a Benjamin Franklin kind of thing to do. Totally. I agree wow. with that. Wow. Be drinking. It's Damn Jeff it. It's Jefferson. Huh? Thomas Jefferson shit! may be responsible Knew for the it. California wine boom. After being sent to France, Jefferson brought back some dank vine cuttings back to the U.S. Jefferson knew what's up. <laughs> of all varieties, types of wine, which is the most widely planted in the world? Red. Red. <laughs> 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 you guys oh, are no. really impressive. <laughs> impressive. Not a peanut noir. Is that the red or is the white? Is that the red or the white? Oh New England clam chowder. Never remember that. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be a cab. It's a yeah, yeah. cab. Thank you, Blair. Yeah. Followed closely by Merlot. Okay. <laughs> Way to go, B. <laughs> <laughs> See? We knew red? it was red. <laughs> He was, was right. Yeah, he was well, right. Yeah, I mean, it's true. There are six key varieties, and I just gave you one because Cab and Merlot are close, so they're considered of the same variety. Name three of the remaining five: Chard, Grigio, Sauvignon Blanc. Shit. Yeah, <laughs> that was easy. Okay. <laughs> nice. 
And these are not including any like. In the first one, your answer was red. <laughs> <laughs> when I asked you about varieties the second time, you like, like bam, bam, gave me the bam, history bam. like in yeah. order. <laughs> Shard, Sauvignon Blanc, Riesling, Syrah, A-B-O-B. Cabernet A-B-O-B. slash Merlot. What else do you want? Pinot? Any other brain busters for us? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. All right. <clears throat> I want to move on to other stuff. Um, let's go ahead and finish our Vinstone. Pour some eater. And before we do, let's take a break. Hi, everybody. Thank you for listening to Something Crunchy, and we hope you're enjoying the episode. It now pays to crunch down every week because we're hooking you up with big discounts from big brands. Up to 35% off Invicta watches using code CRUNCHY and apparel from 8080, where in addition to 10% off using code CRUNCHY, every dollar you spend goes towards an entry in their dream car giveaway. Don't forget to join the Something Crunchy Facebook group for updates, polls, and the web's crunchiest memes. You can find us on Twitter at crunch underscore cast, and feel free to send any questions and track submissions to somethingcrunchy at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the show. Yes, we are. <laughs> All right. Good break. Refueled. So, matching a wine's characteristics to the dominant flavors in body of a meal can elevate a wine's flavor and balance its elements. Sure. It's very common to match a wine with a meal, but that's about as fun as doing your taxes. <laughs> Not high quality entertainment. However, Bubbles came through for us with a fantastic idea. So, Upper Alley. We are going to sift through the list of wine spectators, top 100 wines of 2021, and pair some of these descriptions with the best fitting film. Brilliant. Boom. I mean, (laughs) that sounds like a blast. Yeah. That's awesome. So let's see what we find interesting here. Butcher their names and uh, see if we can't determine the best movie to pair with. Let's start with number one, The Dominus Estate from Napa Valley. 2018, this is a $269 bottle of wine. Are you ready? like the domino. <laughs> oh, yeah. State. Like, I already yeah. see where this is going. This is good. This is tightly packed with sleek, pure, driven notes of cassis, plum reduction, and blackberry puree allied to an iron spine while subtle juniper, sweet bay leaf, and tobacco notes peek in throughout. Very fine grain. Wow. But impressively sturdy in feel with a long, lingering note of iron piercing the finish. Okay. Easy. Easy. Too easy. <laughs> Too easy. Pulp Fiction. Drive Ryan Gosling. Give me a challenge. Whoa. Pulp Fiction's not bad. It is stylish. I see why you said that, and we're kind of on the same level. Yeah. Not far off. No, it's a little dark. It's a little gritty. I'm liking this, and it's like, it's sleek. Yeah, wake up the gimp. Very fine grained, sturdy in feel. Like stands uh, the test of time. I'm liking both of those. Drives Ooh, a good answer that does too. This is too nice. easy. This is so Ira and very shallow. With, with the... <laughs> <laughs> How do you the know? Best description of anything I've ever heard in my life. Like, How do you know he's right? Ira and very shallow. <laughs> me, like I really enjoy that and understand where you're at. Any listener, if you even know what that reference is, if you put it in the comments, we'll send you a t-shirt. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Done. You get that reference? We send you a t-shirt. Yes. I don't give a shit if you fucking Google it. I'll still send you a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> For a link on where to buy one. (laughs) I'm loving where this is going already, by the way. Yes. Let's move on to number three, the heights. This is a cab, okay? Ooh, heights. This throws off an overt and alluring mint aroma, while sweet bay leaf, violet, and red tea notes all glide through together, carried by fine grain tannins. Ends with a gentle echo of mint on the finish it's a stylish and suave wine, and obviously it's Fargo. Oh. No, it's not. <clears throat> it's clearly you get Fargo. Fargo. You got from Fargo that. from that. The because alluring, of, the mint? of course, the alluring mint aroma. It's like white the entire movie. This is obviously Fargo. It's like what so you're you feeling. You see, mint is like crisp, cold, peppermint, white. Yes, it ends with a gentle echo of mint on the finish. The whole thing is minty, while a subtle minerality chimes through. Like it's stylish and suave. This is very. Fargo. Sweet bay leaf? Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh, sure. Hey, Han. Yeah. Unanimous for Francis? <laughs> totally. I mean, I've got a pretty good idea that this is sideways. Oh, you get sideways no vibes from way. this. From the mint? That's from, from the bay leaf and like the suaveness. First I see. of all, you can't, wo- you can't use a wine movie to pair with a wine. You can't? You can't do that? Because every wine pairs with sideways. No, but specifically this one. No, specifically any Pinot would pair with sideways. Ooh. That's his favorite grape. Cab? I don't know. And if you mention Merlot, that would be like an insult to the movie. <laughs> God. <laughs> he gets fucking pissed. Yeah, he does. I love that movie, by the way. That yeah. like we're not even gonna do a top ten wine movies this so it's more about just getting drunk but and talking would about have wine. Made the list. It would have been the list. The rest are like documentaries and like For sure. no, it it is the list. You want a good wine movie? Watch Sideways. And both of those actors are fucking fantastic. Yes. Thomas Hayden Church. He's at the top of our Love. wish list, by the way. Yes. We, Thomas, come on to the show. Hang out with us for a little bit, buddy. We know you're cool. He's not fucking listening. <laughs> you're we don't know right. that. All right. What do we talk about next? Let's move down the list. What about the Maroom Piriati? Um, oh. This is refined and elegant. This concentrated red shows some cherry and violet notes. With expressive mineral undertones that give it finesse. Elements of mountain herb and spice echo through the finish. Grenache. Yeah, it sounds like a pretty dank Syrah. Wow, there's a lot that could go there. It's American beauty for me. You think? It's Brokeback Mountain. No way. (laughs) No way. Refined and elegant. Yes. Can concentrated red shows cherry oh, yeah. violet mm. notes like no way this is like completely American beauty. I get why you say that. Yeah, but I get why you're saying American, American beauty. American beauty the, is the red. refined the and elegant. Yes, American beauty yeah. is refined yes, and elegant. With the bag, it's a cinematic masterpiece. <laughs> with the bag, Come with, on. with the bathtub and the rose petals. No, the rose true. petals. Rose petals. Rose petals. <laughs> I kind of see your broke back mountain with so, like the mountain herb and spice. You know, it's spicy Finesse. out there in the mountains. Y'all are being too literal. It's clearly American beauty. <laughs> I think you're being too figurative. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I have the Alexana here, and uh, it's a Pinot Noir 2018, vibrant red, coiled with tension, offering dynamic raspberry and blueberry flavors that gather notes of spice, cinnamon, and orange oil, building toward medium grain tenons. Okay, this is clear to me. What do you got? Pretty Woman. I don't hate that. That's pretty good. I don't hate it. I can't dispute it. I'm saying more of like a Tyler Perry's Why Did I Get Married? Okay. Yeah, something in that genre. Now, what are you saying? I don't know. The vibrant red coiled with tension. Yes. Gives me like anaconda vibes, but that's way too literal. But we were being literal. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Marty needs the literal coil with tension. I'm feeling coil something snaky. I'm snaky. feeling something slippery. So snaky. So snaky. <laughs> Let me slither Obviously. this in there. Welcome to another episode of Something Snaky. <laughs> <laughs> so you're thinking anaconda vibes. I'm no, going pretty well. No, woman. I'm agreeing with you. To? It's it's fruity and as to like a black snake it's, bone a, it's like a rom-com then. oh we meet in the middle something snaky yeah. and something take what like, we're all kind of saying Blair you did it kind of dirty kind of snaky this is why yeah. we do it folks but this sexy is it. this yeah. is why Coiled it's not a one man show here or a one woman show here it's yeah. because teamwork makes the dream work uh-huh. we're better <laughs> as a tray it's true <laughs> tray of crunch <laughs> you two complete me <laughs> let's do the um, let's do the Louis Latour Ooh, I love a good Louis Latour. This is number six on the list, a 2018 $200 bottle of wine. It's fresh and fruity with aromas and flavors of lemon, pear, white flower, and stone, showing great tension in an underlining mineral component that gives this energy and length. Gotta love some length. Ooh, <laughs> love that. Speaking of length, I got the perfect <laughs> fucking movie for this. Well, the lemon theme continues on lingering through the aftertaste, along with butter and some pastry accents. Yeah. What um, are you thinking? Does that help you? Or yeah, oh, yeah, that helps. It adds to? It does. What are you thinking? Easy. My father, the hero. Damn. <laughs> that's fucking good. The pastries. Oh, my God. Fresh and fruity. Yeah. No, that's it. With aromas, Butter, lemon, pastry. pear, and then you have the pastry, which adds the French, which is energy and Gerard, Gerard Depardieu. 
the pastry. It's perfect. So much energy and length. There. The Louis the two. You know what? That is going to pair so nicely with the My Father the Hero. Yes. Yeah. Now that's an evening right there. We're really on to something, here, you guys. <laughs> Get yourself some Louis Latour and some My Father the Hero. <laughs> Hooray for little girls. <laughs> <laughs> You had to do it. That's the worst part of the movie, I you guess. You had to do it. Yeah. Is that a Just quote? Has... Yeah. That's the song that he sings when he's on stage and everybody thinks that, that he's, he's like a, a huge old creeper. That he's a pedophile made... and he's up there singing to his daughter, hooray for little girls, but Everybody thinks that the daughter is actually the girl that he's dating. See, now you showed your work. Yeah. That's the difference between just like a drunk Throwing it out there. And, 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 and a good movie work. quote. You turn it into a reference. You showed your work and it stays. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is it uncut. It changed everything. It yes. gets to stay. It gets to stay. This is uncut. <laughs> Let's move on to the chateau at number seven. I'm I was just this. looking at let's, the chateau. Yeah, let's look at this. It's St. Julian. Waves of warm cassis, mocha, and warm tar aromas lead the way, mm. while the core of some macerated plum, blackberry, and blueberry fruit waits its turn, showing some admirable breadth and depth when it arrives with toasted applewood. And cast iron buried deeply through mm. the finish. Sound good. This is ridiculous. It's clearly the Revenant or something like no. gritty. Gangs of New York. Oh, that's even better. That's pretty good. You this. kept it Leo. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's obviously a DiCaprio piece. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Obvious. Obviously. That is not what I was thinking. But the fact that you could throw in some Daniel Day. Yes. Because it was going to be like a There Will Be Blood or a Gangs of New York. Something smoke, gritty. Warm tar aromas. You could like, smell it all the way, way across, across the room. The room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes it just presents itself. You guys are both wrong. Really? Yeah. What do tell, you Yeah, see? you tell us about yeah. the Chateau. Yeah, it's love and basketball. Ugh, I don't Whoa. Know, no way. So different and far off. Where are you kidding? me no way not even close not even up that for debate the, oh yeah where are you seeing that yeah show you the word. roasted apple bramble <laughs> that's not it for us yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's where we find ourselves at the five points yeah <laughs> <clears throat> rough on the outside sweet on the inside mm. Mm. let's move on to number nine <laughs> blueberries and tannins there's a salvestrin in here the cabernet at nine it's bright and fresh with lots of red currant, plum, mm. and black cherry fruit notes driving along nicely while a subtle tug of iron runs underneath. Uh, late floral and warm earth flashes on the finish add more range and contrast. Focused, detailed, and really well built. I mean, obviously gone in 60 seconds. Yeah, I was exactly going to say that. Do we need to no, that's debate perfect. this wow. at all? That's or should it. we just go ahead and... That's the correct pa answer. Pair it with some There actually is a correct on. answer. Yeah, oh, no, it. there is a right and wrong Focused, answer. detailed, and really well built. That's I right. Mean, <laughs> I can hear the intro now <laughs> to Gone in 60 Seconds no. as you were like <laughs> Clearly Nick Cage it. and it had to be of the, <laughs> the Gone in 60 time frame. <laughs> Camp. <laughs> All right, so there's one at number 12 that I am so excited to talk about. This is the Poggio Landi. All right. Okay. Now, this description is fun. <laughs> it's broad and mouth-filling. Oh. Exuding floral, black cherry, <gasps> blackberry, graphite, and stony mineral flavors. I'm blushing. <laughs> Powerful, <laughs> yet refined, with tannins that are refined and well-integrated. It shows terrific balance and length wow. oh. it's obviously something idris elba you had me a broad and mouth filling <laughs> this is clearly idris elbow yes. after what we've learned a couple episodes ago i'm gonna go like, obsessed, obsessed or the da vinci load it's one of the two <laughs> i'm leaning towards obsessed with beyonce and idris elba yeah. I, yes i think that would pair nicely with it this just cab. fits here. I think. If, <laughs> I'm thinking if you're drinking this shit alone, then it's better to hop on blacked.com and then find anything over 45 minutes is going to pair well with this. I mean, it's broad and mouth filling. Yeah. Like black cherry, Balance blackberry, graphite, lake. stony mineral flavors. Powerful. 
<laughs> it's got balance and length, Blair. This could only be an Idris Elba film. such an film. Idris thing to do. It could have been a fast bender, but we know that's all bullshit. Yeah. Right? No, no. We no. know that that's We're a gonna rumor. We're going to go heavy on the Idris now. Can you believe that? First hand account. Disputing. I love that y'all were out in the wild dispelling. having the I can only hope that that happens. That like, people are just out talking about something crazy crunchy, and they're like, you know what? His dick is not that big, actually. <laughs> So glad we're having this discussion, and then just like everybody's chatting about. But what it. if that dude had like a thirty-four inch fucking you know mutation dick, and everybody? Well, else that's what I'm saying. It's all a... relative at the yeah. same time. This guy definitely had a Samoan mountain of a cock. Yeah. He had something to say about it though. Like that guy didn't like want to talk about his dick, but he did. No, one of his grandfathers <laughs> tattooed it with fishbone. <laughs> It totally had tribal ink yeah. running Stopped down the shaft. The conversation with his girlfriend <laughs> to discuss Fastbender Dog. She was guy. into it. She wanted to give I'm us sure crap she was. while like yeah. couldn't wait. She to was join shaming the us for thinking that that was big. Yeah, she was. Like it, we'd it, even seen it. It was like, what's the matter with you? All right, let's move on to number eighteen, the Burn Cottage. This is a sweet little Pinot here. Oh, Burn Cottage. It's generous and pure, with a core of maraschino cherry raspberry puree and red licorice flavors on a plush velvety frame expanding into details of sandalwood white truffle rosemary and cardamom shrek. um shrek 100 percent. shrek yep you are outside of your mind it's yep. sunshine cleaning and for obvious reasons <laughs> sunshine cleaning i kind of see where you were going i was gonna say there will be blood but no we are no no no, no. we already went through our daniel day i know i know no, i tried to move totally on no, this, is, this is more generous and pure yeah i like sunshine but i feel like shrek if you're gonna have to like sit through a kid's movie you're gonna need some fruity fun flavored wood. i agree with that but because it's expanded into the details of sandalwood and white truffle i feel like it a velvety of... frame yeah White truffle and rosemary? White yeah. truffle? I mean, truffle? it kind of changes everything. I don't know. I'm almost feeling like Matrix vibes. Really? Something Keanu? Like yeah, a white, like white just, rabbit, white truffle situation? Yeah, like a taste of Keanu here. Like Blair loves a taste <laughs> of Keanu. <laughs> <laughs> this could be more of a sweet November Keanu. I'm not sure. <laughs> I haven't seen anyone take a sip in a minute. Oh. I'm halfway done with my last glass. There's oh. another glass? Yeah, what do you, yeah, we're on to the eater. Blair, you're not on your cab? What? You're no. still on Vinstone? What? Come on, Blair. Blair, get off the stone and move on to the eater. Oh, wow. Get off your stone. Get, get off onto the stone, eater. Get on to the eater. That is like easy to Hit drink. some of this is ether. That not real quick. so good. Now, I'm kind of looking at this Conchai Toro. And it's are. a Syrah 2018, elegant and well structured concentrated dark fruit and asian spice flavors Ooh. filled with a creamy richness now like obviously so many things come to mind already yeah it's easy kill bill it's kill bill <laughs> yeah. that's pretty good <laughs> hints of chocolate truffle dried meat that are tightly wound i mean if that doesn't say kill bill then i don't yeah, know yeah dried does. meat with the asian spice, like spice. oh yeah. my gosh kill, kill bill easy yeah, that's correct too easy y'all all the puzzle jealous. pieces are too coming easy. together now for sure <laughs> got any other brain busters boy? <laughs> i do let's talk about the cayuse from okay. the walla walla valley vineyard okay this is a real knockout syrah structured and refined yet bubbling over with personality offering expressive raspberry garouge warm petal and smoky beef tones that build tension and polish toward the fine grade tannins. Um, it's award winning. It is. It's Sherlock Holmes or Snatch. I can't make up oh, my no, mind it's between oh, the two. Snatch. It's Snatch. snatch. Is yeah. it Snatch? So it's, Snatch. It's one of the two, but no, I can't make up as my soon mind. as you said Snatch, it, it like clicked. It's somebody's best, and it's Guy Ritchie's. It's Snatch. I agree. Done. Very Snatchy. Extra Snatchy. Uh, <laughs> Very Snatchy in these woods. I got another one here. Let's move on to the Chianti, number 20 on the list. Ooh, I love a fresh Chianti. I mean, do we even have to hear it? I know. We do. Is it obvious? It's not. It's not. Okay. Well, let's hold on. Let's read it. It's not I'm lambs? sure it's going to be obvious to me. It's not lambs. It's not lambs. No. Okay. No. No? That's, that's low-hanging grapes. Any okay. Chianti going to be lambs? No. <laughs> Though ripe and lush, this is also dense, with pointed tannins giving a physical sensation and lifting the cherry strawberry and floral flavors finds a nice 
youthful equilibrium in the end where mouth-watering acidity roams. It's clearly cruel intentions. Wow. Like, I was thinking Pleasantville for a second, no. but it took a turn. I was so thinking some wild intentions. things in a pinch, but it's cruel intentions. It's those tannins that change the cruel <laughs> intentions. Like, <laughs> change the game. I mean, yeah, that right. can take you from Pleasantville to cruel intentions Cecile. immediately. <laughs> Cecile. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, let's move on to this little pino called three sticks this has a fun description number 28 okay powerful in rich tasting with concentrated dark berry and fruit flavors minerally mid palate with a well-knit spiciness and forest floor notes lingering on the suave finish um i know what you're gonna say robin hood prince of thieves Ooh, that has you on the forest floor. <laughs> that is not what I thought you were going to say. What are you thinking? <laughs> what did you think I was going to say? Never mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so obvious. It's clearly... Costner's Robin Hood. It is clearly Robin Hood. Yeah. That's a good call. Give me a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Give me something tough here. Okay, so I have one here. What you got? How about Boundary Breaks? It's a 2019 Riesling... A bright floral style with lots of honeysuckle and acacia notes leading the way for lemon peel and yellow apple fruit flavors, followed by a zingy finish. There's a clear mm. answer for me. What do you have? It's the birdcage. <laughs> you Tell can't. me anything otherwise. I'm not able to debate you on this. Tell me anything otherwise. You're get, correct. You are correct. Very good. It, it definitely has the Nathan Lane factor. Hank Azaria, Nathan Lane, like bright floral, honeysuckle, acacia with a bit of the lemon peel. I mean, it's It's obvious. very Miami. It is. Yeah. Very Nathan Lane with like a couple Azaria notes. Yeah. Yes. A touch of Art Deco. <laughs> <laughs> touch of of his area? I was thinking more of the birdcage for 43, the Carol Shelton. That's okay. his, that's his infant. Let's hear about those. It's a juicy bomb of fruit. <laughs> this red is also well structured with lively raspberry, toasted spice, and roasted sage flavors that linger on a snappy finish. Oh no. It's that thing you do. It oh I like something snappy. It's the snappy finish the snappy that obviously fisher. makes it that thing you <laughs> do. So we're going to put the Carol Juicy Shelton. Bomb of fruit. Yeah. It's a, uh, the Carol Shelton's going to pair nicely with that thing you do. The Carol Shelton. Scoot on down the 45, the Quinta de Noval. This is juicy and muscular. Oh. With a ball of plum taste, <laughs> warmed fig compote. Warm. And black currant reduction flavors that need time to unwind. Ample graphite and bramble accented grip underscores the fruit on the finish. While a ganache note finds some room to strut its stuff in the end. Oh, the Godfather. Oh. No, it's pain and gain. It's pain and gain. Juicy and muscular right from the start. Pain and gain. But I feel like it takes a long time to get going. It does take a long time to get but going. Does it's it like it's like a, stuff in the end. That's like a three hour movie. No, that is so Wahlberg and D Wayne. D Wayne. You think? I do think. You throw in some uh, Anthony Mackie in the mix. This yeah. is pure. You know, I am saying juicy it, like, and muscular. The more and more that you say, because again, very Miami. Yeah, I'm feeling it. I don't know what movie this is, but the Schloss Gobblesburg needs to be something. Schloss and Gobblesburg. Oh, that's uh, the Euro, Euro trip. It's a German porn. We'll meet in the middle at yeah. Euro trip. Y'all nailed that way too well. <laughs> 77. See that? The Marcassin is a Pinot. Oh. From the Sonoma Coast. Elegant and richly spiced with fine grained dried cherry and berry flavors that carry hints of aged beef and hot stone. Stop. The minerally finish is long and caressing. Whoa. With silky tannins and some forest floor notes. Aged beef? Yeah. Wild so hogs. Old hogs or They're wild hogs. <laughs> it's either that or the Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, I was no. thinking tombstone for a second. Yeah, some aged that, beef down there. It's not aged quite enough. That's a good beef, but yeah. it, it's not that aged. <laughs> they looked aged, but they were actually like twenty five. The yeah. They just looked Shitty for their age. If you've more just focused on Sam Elliott's character, like you can maybe get away with some aged beef, but no, he ages too more. well. It's all about Travolta 
Yeah. It's, it's old hall. No. It's the Irishman. It's the Irishman. That's a three hour movie with the like all the good actors, the oldest they've ever been. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get them back together again. Hot old beef right there. Hot <laughs> old beef. <laughs> All right, so at 96 down here, we got a cab called The Turt. This is fresh and pure in profile, with a cassis in cherry core that drives along nicely, flanked by a tobacco edge before lingering over tobacco and warm earth, hints on the finish. Um, obviously, thank you for smoking, and I was do we need to discuss? Thinking <laughs> that, like, God, immediately what I was thinking. <laughs> It is a bit literal, but it's sometimes it's just such a good it's, fit. It's though. just there right I in front know. of you. It is what it is. It is what it is. But he's so good, and that's such a good movie. That movie's Agreed. fucking great. I yes. want to watch it like every other month. I Anytime can't, somebody I watch brings it, it up, pull through every single time it's on. I am hammered. So I can't even see I you guys right now. Drunk. What are my we even eyes talking about? You have completely crossed. Is this even good? This is the last of my glass here. Blair's got a glass and a half. What are we even talking about? Blair, you got a lot of wine in front of you. How did you get a Diet Coke on the table? <laughs> Where did that come Blair's from? Blair's got six glasses of wines and a can There's of Diet Coke. There's wine in there now. It's a Diet Coke. Uh, Diet Napa Coke. Valley. Uh, Diet Coke. 1992. <laughs> Lee, I, a Diet like my Coke right guy. eye is about to just like <laughs> shut completely right now. Like my left is like vibrant and alive, but my right's like I'm done. It's got the Bensons. You got a real biodome <laughs> kind of a pairing going on over here. <laughs> <laughs> Blair needs to pair this next wine with the sofa. <laughs> like, <laughs> let her nap it out for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, y'all! This, I was this next not wine for pairs the wine. nicely with a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> In a fat cow. Yeah, yeah. A bottle of Arrowhead. <laughs> Ten hour nap. <laughs> Too easy. We're good at this. We're good. <laughs> We're good at this. I run Barry Shallowitz. We're just going to Ira Barry Shallowitz this thing. I don't know if that worked. Did How that... do you know he's right? I can't, Pairings? I can't tell if that worked for us yet. <laughs> I'll have to listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do y'all think about our pairing? We killed it. I don't know how we did there. I feel like we got an A+. Plus. Well, think... we nailed it with our pairings. I just don't know how I like it as a segment. Um, well, it's too late now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Too hammered to keep well, going. I'm drunk and we did this. Yeah. That was awesome. All good right. job, everybody. That was a good time. Yeah. That was fun matching movies with wines. Having a good time. <laughs> and this eater is kicking my ass. Oh, my God. Seriously. <laughs> I'm pairing my eater with a rag of ether. <laughs> and I'm going to go to bed tonight. <laughs> well, let's move on to our track of the week. Now... Same as when we discussed featuring live music, instrumentals are not discriminated against here. They just have to be of a certain caliber and must be recorded well. I am stoked to spend this mood-fitting instrumental. In the first instrumental track of the week, out of Denver, Colorado, this is Dango with Bacon Maybes. <laughs>
fucking sweet. Very nice. Yeah. I've been pumped about playing that groove sesh for a while. Very fitting, very crunchy. I wish I could sing. I would sing to that shit. But... <laughs> no! Like, it made me want to go way up top. It made you want to get those high notes? Yes. Yeah. He those, was feeling those it. Those earthy high notes? Yeah. <laughs> Matthew says they are just a few individuals who found a great connection through music. Bacon Maybes is probably one of their favorite songs to play live. The song really gives them a chance to just groove and enjoy the vibe with people around them, he says. Love it. They are currently working on a few new tracks and planning for a single release or two before the end of the year. Great stuff. Thank you, Matthew. And you can check out more tracks by Dang O on the tubes or directly on their website at www.dangoband.com. While you're at it, keep on sending those track submissions to somethingcrunchy at gmail.com. It's time for the new Dream Car giveaway over at 8080. In addition to the 15% off you get for using code CRUNCHY, they're offering five times the entry right now. And the giveaway number 51 is for a little 650 horsepower Lamborghini Huracoon and $60,000 in cash you do not want to miss out. Nor do you want to forget to check out somethingcrunchy.com where you'll find every episode or links for social media and the Almighty Crunch Store where you'll find all kinds of crunchy gear showing that you are a proud citizen of Crunch Nation. Then there's the Something Crunchy Facebook group. The best distraction ever created for pinching the loaf. <laughs> if you're not in there shit posting or laughing at one of our 5,000 mean kings and queens, you're missing out. This has been another episode of Something Crunchy. And as always, don't ever forget to live your crunchiest life and be crunchy to one another. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe, like, follow, and all that crunchy good shit. Thank you for listening. How are we feeling tonight? <laughs> <laughs> A bit toasted already. Didn't even think about it. I was totally kidding. Oh, well, then shit. <laughs> We're totally superior yeah. in every way. Why wouldn't it be Get true out of here. in wine tasting as well? He'll cut that. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good idea. Sorry, what? Oh, it was like processing. Fuck processing. your mother. The wine is <laughs> delaying the process. Uh. <laughs> Maybe I'll cut that. Throw it in a bloop. <laughs> Just going to move it from this part of the soda to the end of the soda. <laughs> Please hold. Well, I don't have a picture of this. <laughs> You can smell like, it all the way, way across, across the room. room. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. What was the question? I forgot. Wait, what? where are we? Pet food. Fiber. Vinter. <laughs> yes, it is. Hey, and then my animals in. <laughs> oh. Scratching around. Sorry, sir. <laughs> I never bring my work home with me, sir. <laughs> Just waiting on Blair, drinking some butter. <laughs> drinking some melted butter. It's just terrible. It's not as bad as it is horrible. <laughs> yeah. It's it, not bad. It's not bad, but it's not good either. Who is it? Now I'm livid. <laughs> Let's see. Not me. It's not me. It was you. It was so Tyler. You're busted. It's on silent. What do you want? Silent under your nuts. Yeah, it's on the chair. Why Put it on top of the chair. Put it in your bouquet. <laughs> <laughs> Tug it under your nuts. You can hear it there. You can hear it everywhere. I'm almost done with this piece of shit. Yeah, I'm trying to choke mine down. <laughs> Mr. Snippins. Y'all so drunk right now. Dr. Snippin. Hammered. Yeah. Oh my God. Straight. Hammered. I, don't I feel had good. taken a sip before. Feel good. He was like, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't feel good. Don't it like feels it. different. This is not how I crunch. Tyler's gonna be I so sick. <laughs> Look at Tyler's lips. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the most purple lips right now. <laughs> I'm a pur- Tyler is I'm why I don't purple. drink red yeah. right now. And I probably <laughs> my teeth, yeah. My teeth are too That's big. Why I don't drink. <laughs> my lips are too cracked. I can't do red. Six five. <laughs> <laughs> no. What did he look like, Mr. Reed? I can't. <laughs> Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed.
my <laughs> eyeliner stopped on my face. Yeah. My teeth and face are red. It's like, okay, clown bitch, get yeah. out of here. Yeah. <laughs> you're scaring everybody. <laughs> oh, you're pretty, all right. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> She's having a good time. <laughs> you can't make me laugh when I have a rip in my chest. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> clown bitch. <laughs> Hammer smashed face. I can't imagine if I drank on my butter, but I got like halfway <laughs> down. <laughs> There's another glass. Oh, yeah, oh Blake. Oh, yeah. oh my god. Oh yeah. Hey, this is good right here. Oh. Okay. Okay. We went from the buttery shard to the good Pinot. <laughs> to the good red. It's good red. We have noises coming out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you all can feel a part of us now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can't. Uh, <laughs> these mics pick up everything. They pick up yeah. your soul. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you like start digesting dinner and it picks it up. Like. <laughs> The depth yeah. of it. Sounds like a bagel and cream cheese. You're not just a listener when you're with something crunchy. Like you're really you're, become you're, one. An, you're an inspector. Part of the fame. You are part of our soul. Where'd you get that? <laughs> oh, oh, oh boy. This should be fun second half. <laughs> 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 Wait, do it again. <laughs> do it again. Uh, that was a buttery question. <laughs> it was flawed from the start. It was. I don't know what you want. The wine soda is not going well. 